Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Rabbit Motor Works, and we're back with the Cutlass. And today's video, we're gonna do some of the things under the hood that need some attention as far as wiring. And we're also gonna get into some of the interior as well too. As we started yanking out uh, a lot of the old seam sealer in the car and uh, doing a cleanup of the floor along with some other restoration which is uh, starting to get into some of the windows and we also took out the headliner so stay tuned as we get into the episode it should be a fun one of all kinds of more restoration right yeah yeah cool So one of the things that we found is that this horn was installed as an auxiliary and there's a button underneath the dash that you push, right? So you want to show us the horn and what it does? Yeah, it's kind of loud, it's right that. Okay. Job do it. Let me connect up the battery here real quick because I had disconnected it just to... Okay, so now why don't you push the horn button. So show everybody where the horn button is. It's there, so we will connect it right there. Okay, push it once. Yeah, that sounds kind of weak, doesn't it? Yeah. Push it one more time. Yeah, that doesn't sound like much of a horn. So the cool thing about these older American cars is they do have the dual horns on the front. So if you look underneath and behind each side of the grill, there's actually uh, two horns here. If you can see up in here, there's one of them, and someone's actually disconnected one of them. You can see that uh, wire right there. And I did take apart the steering wheel and saw that uh, all the internals for the horn button were gone. So we're gonna try to source some of those parts, but uh, at least for now, for starters, let's take out the existing uh, auxiliary horn and get it back to stock. Yeah. Okay, folks, so that is no longer in there and disconnected from the horn relay. So Junior actually took the button out from under the dash. So that's good as well. And the part I was talking about here in the uh, horn pad is uh, actually here where you would have a pin and a wire coming up to the ground here so that whenever you hammer on this thing it throws the horn on so those are missing and I was thinking about potentially replacing this wheel with a sport wheel and still on the hunt for that too so if anybody's got one let me know but with that uh, I think that at least gets out some of the wiring that we're gonna need out of the way anyways because we are gonna start taking that quarter panel off Two to get at our blower motor which is in the upper left hand corner there too so so that is going to be another part of this video and a project hey guys back the next day and catching you up on some of the stuff i've been doing with the cutlass so prepping for body work i started removing the chrome from all the wheel wells and things are really good on this side a little chewy down here which i'll have to do a, some kind of a patch other than that things are pretty tight that fender's been replaced and over here is where things get ugly uh, as we already kind of knew that fender is trash i do have a patch panel that we're going to get into I started taking the emblems off. This actually used some press-in plugs for the emblems rather than the screws on the back, which I thought was kind of unique. Um, the other panel fender on the other side did not have an emblem on it. It was a replacement panel. So I did start specking out uh, where that emblem has to go. And if we come to the back, this is where things get kind of treacherous. If you look at this back quarter, um, 
this is definitely chewy. I basically been blowing out uh, the dirt out of the rocker. There's actually a drain hole and that was all plugged. That blew out a big, pretty big hole right there, which we'll have to patch, but it's chewy all the way through this wheel well down to this piece that's gone. They don't make a patch panel for this. They basically, the only thing that they make is a whole quarter for this thing. It may be worth consideration considering how much patching has to be done there. Um, so I'm gonna kind of weigh it out. There's a bit of a ding here. And then this door has got some issues. I did start taking the door panels off too. And just to inspect and kind of understand the inside of the doors. Plus I'm gonna grease all the tracks for the windows as they're definitely dried up and there's no more grease left in them so that'll be a maintenance thing as well as I got them open. The passenger door has got a bit of a dent here. There's not much in the way of being able to get behind that is because this main pillar is going all the way through. So that's going to prevent me from putting some kind of a dolly on it. So that might be a candidate for maybe a uh, a weld, basically the, the weld, stick welder where you can put on uh, sticks and then pull them out with a, with a puller. And so I've seen those in use for something like that. Looking around the back, I did take the back cutlass emblem off. It's just prepping for body work. And then on the driver's door, we got some more surprises. Looking in the panel here, there is some definite bodywork that's been previously done from whenever that front quarter or, or fender was hit. As you can see, there's body mud oozing through in upper part right in here and then lower part in here. And if you look at this curvature here, this doesn't necessarily look correct either. So. I'm going to have to grind that down and see what's there. I'm going to try to avoid having to put a door skin on it. Um, I did get a new fender installation kit for both front fenders. So that's good because the front bolts on the driver's side fender I started to loosen and this washer just kind of broke in half so and as you can see I've just been really stripping the car down getting it ready for body work and uh, I did purchase a pretty cool body hammer set from gear wrench so we'll be using that I got some really cool um, seam sealer to replace some of the seam sealer inside of the floor I don't know if I showed you guys that, but uh, all that seam sealer that was basically coming out all over the inside, it just basically would chip away. Um, I'm going to replace all that seam sealer with that newer stuff, and that's paintable. And I do have some 415 to coat the floor, too. So, but that's a, kind of a catch me up from stuff I did off camera. The, the plan is, is to pull the hood and that'll allow me to take off the front fenders as well as our blower motor is right underneath here. So we'll be trying to get to that hopefully in this video, um, if not a future video. But uh, there is where we're at. So let's do some more work on it and uh, keep moving forward. We got a lot of stuff to clean up on the floor as we took part of Virginia and <laughs> moved it to California. What's up guys? We're back. It's another day and we got the hood off the cutlass. So I got a little preoccupied with another issue and that was the alternator wasn't charging the battery. So I took it for a spin and I was driving on the other side of Zamperini Field over here in Torrance and uh, the generator light came on so I was like why is this you know it just doesn't seem like it's uh, 
uh, charging well, and I went to go put some gas in it, and I almost got stuck at the gas station with the car not starting. So, um, <laughs> that's another project that I started ripping into, is I did buy a uh, new alternator um, to replace the old one here. It doesn't seem like the bearing shot on it or anything like that, but it definitely isn't charging because I did throw the the meter on it and it was only pulling about uh, a little bit under 12 volts, so it should be pushing at least 14. So here's the new alternator and um, one of the things I did notice on it is the pulley size is different compared to the one that's on this one. So then I started looking at the belts and I ordered some new belts because the one that's on the car is actually a different size than what they've listed stock uh, as I looked at uh, Rock Auto to check out on it and see. So I've also got the battery on the charger. Uh, I charged it uh, the other day let it sit and now I put it back on the charger and it seems like it's charging again. So my other concern is that this battery might be cooked and it might not be holding the charge. So either way, I'm gonna try to put that on and, and get that cranking over soon here. But I did start digging into um, wire wheeling and cleaning up some of this uh, rusted area on the battery. And I put in these new um, pierced nuts for the battery tray, so now it's got three complete nuts as I had only had uh, about two or about one and a half really. And uh, those things went in pretty easily. Um, as you can see, these things are just pretty much, they sit right in between the square punch outs and the metal and you just kind of set them in place with a bolt. But uh, so uh, the bigger project, as I keep alluding to in this video, is really getting into replacing that blower motor. And uh, this is the blower motor that I bought, which is really super simple. And um, that's what we want to get at. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to get that fender off. So I'll set up uh, the camera and I'll probably do a time lapse of taking that fender off to get at that uh, blower motor behind there. So let's do that. Okay guys, quite the journey getting that thing off. Oh my gosh, check it out. Fantastic. It uh, was quite the thing to getting that fender off. There's the uh, rust damage there and this bolt right here was rusted and spinning around with the speed nut so I'd use the grinder to take it off. Here's the inner fender well. 
So I think someone's had it off before as I noticed some of the bolts were sorta half tight. But uh, as you can see, that's our blower motor. That's what we needed to get off and change. And then down in here, all kinds of goodies. So this is great because I'm glad that we're taking these off as it'll give a perfect mounting uh, for all the new fasteners and hardware that we've got. Plus we get a nice side view of the motor and frame, which looks really good. Valve cover gaskets are leaking a little bit. That's kind of something I knew. Took out the charcoal canister, but look at all this stuff. It's in really great shape considering, you know? So charcoal canister even looks pretty clean too. I was really surprised by that. So yeah, I'm really pleased. Um, so now it's really about cleaning all this up, popping off that other blower motor, and we'll start doing that as the next step. So yay. Okay guys, check them back in. Done some more cleanup. Uh, completely vacuumed out all the loose pieces are around the fender, the body, and uh, the cowl. I took the screen off the top here too and vacuumed out all the crap. Took the screen and cleaned this up as well too as it had a bunch of debris on it so now it's in better shape. Took off the seal for the hood. That was just crumbly. Threw that in the trash. And uh, I also just took off both belts for the air conditioning compressor and the alternator as I'll, that'll be the piece that I need to replace for uh, putting the new alternator on. There is a separate power steering belt too that I did not purchase. And I was almost thinking about ordering one of those too, just to have all new belts on them. The belts aren't in too bad a shape, but they are um, starting to get a little older and uh, a little cracky. So I don't know, I'm gonna kind of look at them. Maybe I'll end up keeping what I've got, but um, I think it's important to uh, at least assess the condition of them. So there's enough here now, I think, to start doing some cleanup as well. So I'll start getting into this, some of that, probably with some simple green, just to start taking a layer of grease off some things. And I'm gonna pop out or blower motor. Okay guys, so believe it or not, this is still a working blower motor. Uh, I had to completely take it out, uh, clean it, and for some reason this connection was corroded that ground didn't seem like it was good but if we go inside the car I did throw the battery in it and at least plug the alternator in so it's got some primary power but ta -da. and it seems like it's working well through all the speeds because there is a resistor on it but that's good and uh, that's what we wanted. So, bit of a extra part that hopefully I can get some credit back on if I try to return it. But sometimes that's just it with these cars is uh, the grounds go bad and uh, you know, you name it. So, well, so that was half the battle right there. So I'm glad that that works. Now I've got a lot of things exposed and I can start doing some cleanup. So I've got some simple green and I think I'm gonna do some scrub down here as well. And I did start um, cleaning up the fender and I actually buzzed off some of the bottom of the, the rust here. This part's a little chewy here and I kind of needed this piece to fab onto that. So I might have to cut a specific piece just for this inner part of the fender. This seems like it's pretty tacked on there as well too. It's got a flange and it's a little bit of that. So my patch panel is only really the outside of this and not the inner part of the fender. So I'm gonna to try to save as much as I can there. And then I at least scrub the inner part of the fender. There's some overspray that I'll probably try to clean up and uh, do a little bit better job getting some of the grease out of there. But at least for the most part, um, that fender liner is a lot cleaner than it was, so. <laughs> All right, guys, the adventure continues. 
man oh man so as you can see i've been flushing water through the cowl which is right here and in this a channel comes down well, let's go on the other side i'll show you what really happens so water comes in rain debris everything's supposed to be filtered through this screen nothing comes in there it channels down here goes in here and funnels all the way into the rocker comes all the way out here with a little hole right here and there's continued stuff coming out of there like crazy however i found the mouse houses of mouse houses uh massive stuck in this part of the quarter panel down here so i was literally taking my hand jamming it far down as i can as i can grab it to yank out mouse house material it filled up with water filled up the inside of the interior i had water coming out here filling up the back it was crazy so what i've been doing is i've got it all mostly fleshed out and i've been using this pick to um, stick this up in the hole pull stuff down and, and pull it out and so i finally finally have got some flowage from front to back so and this thing was on a peanut farm so the critters had an ample supply of peanuts and peanut shells um to keep them definitely full so the cool thing is is at least i've got it all out now and i finally i think eradicated all the mice out of the car and i thought i had already done that so um yeah so with that done okay so camera battery battery died so that's the i don't know the battlefield <laughs> as it's been and i think i'm getting close to having all that done so that's awesome and but it's just been an adventure working on this car uh, now that i started really tearing into it but uh, i'm i'm confident that uh, the next things i'm gonna i'm gonna start to do on it are gonna be pretty uh pretty moving to be able to get a lot of things restored so um yeah okay so camera battery died but I think you guys got a gist of what I was trying to tell you. So it's really just been a battle of trying to get all the stuff, the mice heist house, the mice heist of the cutlass and the houses out of the cutlass. So, but man, man, oh man, what a job. So let's clean all this up and start working on other things like cleaning the motor. Okay, simple green the motor part of the frame things really started to clean up that simple green really does its stuff um, and it smells good so as you guys can see much much cleaner and uh, took another layer off the motor a uh, couple of things I'm not such a big fan of the red heater hoses the blue distributor cap and of course as I've mentioned in previous videos the spaghetti wires and so I'm gonna try to do that take care of it and I may even tackle the valve cover gaskets now that I've got some exposure to everything here. And things are starting to look more gold here. So that's awesome. Yeah. The other thing we did was start taking the air cleaner down and uh, wire brushed it a bit. And took off the, um, we took off the uh, stickers, right? Yeah, and we took off the fender. We took the fender off, of course, yeah. And the other thing because we got some of our uh, cool stickers. stickers yeah stickers are cool for kids right and for like the car you want to hold right. those up yeah. yeah that one's for the air cleaner right yeah this that's one, that's the air cleaner right there right right it does like right here and then this one sort of does like uh yeah on this show everybody part. where that goes that's where that goes that's right the other one was like crumpled up and it like didn't have like you can hardly even see it and like what's yeah. on Let's it. Let's see that other one. This 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 is kind of cool. I think that'll look neat. What is that? That's the uh, oh, that's the bag for the sticker. So it tells all the information about the car. So 
It's always cool when you pull stickers up too. Here's some original paint here underneath there. So. And it says keep your DM tar all DM. That's right. That means that you, they want you to use GM parts. Cool. Yeah, because that's the factory and if you don't use GM parts, it looks different and which you have to go replace it then. Yeah. There you go. You got to go replace it again if you don't use GM parts. Okay, so here's the couple of belts. There's the other power stream belt on there. Uh, they're not in bad shape, and, but I think I'm going to start pull, putting everything back together with the new alternator as well as the wiring too. So stay tuned to that in another video. Yeah. I think that's going to do it for today for this video, guys. We've done a lot of work today taking the quarter panel off getting all of the extra mouse houses out of the car and really we're we got a working blower motor and we've gotten in a better position here to start doing some more work on the car specifically uh, I want to tighten up some things on the motor get the new alternator put in probably time the vehicle and uh, get our new quarter panel put together and we'll stitch on a patch panel that I bought along with a welder so uh, consider subscribing follow me on instagram and thanks everybody for watching peace